Hello. Hello, Danny. How are you? I'm fine. Sorry for the delay. Sorry for the delay, but the uh, the previous interview took a bit longer than expected. <laughs> That's quite all right. Uh, thank but you for going. But you are going to be the last for tonight, so take whatever, take every time you need. So, no problem at all. Uh, unfortunately, I do not see you on video. Oh, uh, ah, I have to start the video. There we go. <laughs> That's me in my yes, sir. By a Munich Stadium. Welcome. Awesome. How are you doing today? I'm fine. I'm fine. And you? I'm awesome. Thank you so much for going into the pit with me here for Alamo True Metal, San Antonio, Texas, wow. USA, of course. And I know you've had a full day of these, so I thank you very much. It's an absolute pleasure. And we're here to talk about all things Halloween and the brand new self-titled album that dropped last Friday uh, via yeah. Nuclear Blast Records. Fantastic record, as always. I have to tell you um, from the beginning, ever since I saw the Halloween video in 1987, Halloween has always been one of my favorite bands, uh, especially in the power metal genre. So um, Danny, what I'd like to do is normally when I interview subjects, I start with the new album and I work backwards. Today, I wanna go a little more the opposite way, chronological with your career. Uh, I know you've been in the band since 2005, uh, about 16 and a half years, which is exactly when I moved to San Antonio from Florida. So that's I, easy for me to remember. Um, so you, but you're still technically the newest guy in the band, even though it's been 16 years. I know you hear that all the time. Um, as, 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 uh, um, oh, no, uh, what's, what's the, the name of the ACDC singer? Uh, Bon Scott, Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson. He is still the new singer. The new guy. <laughs> well, I read, a, I read an interview. I read an interview a couple of weeks ago, and he what? said he was talking about with an interviewer about the same topic. So he said, "Yeah, after 35 years or almost 40 years, I'm still the newbie." Oop. So <laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Well, Danny, yours is not as extreme, but can you tell me you joined during the Keeper of the Seven Keys Legacy uh, album? and then immediately went into the live album DVD for that tour in Sao Paulo. Uh, what was it like since the band was trying to rekindle the Keeper of the Seven Keys type of music at that time? What was it like for you joining the band during that period of time? How did you get the gig? I mean, I, um, I grew up with listening Halloween too. So uh, as you can imagine, getting uh, all of a sudden getting a call so from the long time, our long time producer, Charlie Bauerfeind. I mean, with this guy, I've been working even longer, almost 20 years before I joined Halloween. I had already been working with him for years. So, and so when it was about uh, replacing the drummer or the drum throne, let's take it that way. So uh, actually, uh, Lydia, that's uh, Andy Derry's wife, um, came up with that idea. Because with my previous band, Royal Rex, we, we recorded at uh, Andy's house, at Andy's studio as well. So, and so I get I got into contact with the uh, with the families and of course with our producer, yeah, and all these guys. And when it was about to replacing uh, Stefan, I, I I've known him for I don't know before I joined Halloween, of course. So um, Ludel came up with that idea, and Charlie was like, "Yeah, completely forgotten, Danny." So, um, so I got the call. And um, I, my audition was a kind of, it wasn't an audition. They just asked me to fly in to record three left songs. Yeah. Most of the songs were already, had already been recorded back then before I started recording the last three. And after, the, after these three songs, uh, I remember that morning quite well. I was, I was hanging at the, at the kitchen of the studio. And so all of a sudden, uh, Sasha came in completely flustered. Oh, daddy. So, and I said, yeah, Sasha, what's up? And he was like, do you finally want to join Halloween or not? <laughs> and I said, yeah, if someone asked me, I, I couldn't hear me say no then. And he said, okay, fancy joining in. And I said, yeah, of course. So, and right at that moment, Charlie came out of the uh, engineering room and he, he was listening to me what I said and he was like, okay, I go back and so I replace, uh, I, I delete all the recorded drums from Stefan. So 
because the band wanted to have one drummer, one lineup, not a kind of a mixture of oh, those three songs recorded by Danny Loeble and those, uh, I don't know by whom and whatever. So they wanted to have funny, they wanted to get back finding the kind of a band feeling. So, and that was the funny moment. And so the rest is history, so. Awesome. So, so let's fast forward to the Pumpkins United tour. Uh, obviously for Halloween fans the world over, just a fantastic set of news when it was first revealed that everybody, pretty much everybody was gonna come back together. Uh, I had the good fortune of being in the photo pit for the Hollywood show at oh, the Palladium. Yeah. Uh, the Palladium remember September that show, 8, yeah. 18, yeah um, at the Palladium, uh, shooting the first two songs, Halloween and Dr. Steen. Um, when did discussions of reuniting with Kai and Kiski and bringing it all together, uh, when did that discussions first begin and what was your favorite memory from the tour all over? Well, you would wonder now. Um, the first time um, I heard about those talkings were right the moment I joined Halloween. Wow. Uh, even back then were rumors uh, about this, uh, what about doing an, a kind of a reunion thing, uh, whatever. So, yeah, talkings were around, but no one of us gave a serious thought to it, you know. But the management was a kind of, okay, why not? Yeah, it, it, it would be a logical step ahead. Hmm? I mean, if you have a, if you if you have such a history as as Halloween have has sorry, I mean um, then it would be and it, it was clear as crystal that at some point in the career, all the boys will come together. Yeah. Mm. And so, but we lost track of that story uh, back then. So um, it took us yeah mainly. Uh, th th 13 years, I don't know, 13 years to get into serious talkings about it. Mm -hmm. And and it was um, after, the, yeah, during the God Given Right tour, <clears throat> even back then, it was clear that we are going to do, um, yeah, let's call it reunion tour. Okay. Uh, at the beginning, it was planned just as a tour, and then we'll see what happens next. So, but yeah, during the end, yeah, more at the end of the God Given Right tour, it was clear the next time we're going to enter the stage, it'll be seven of us. Yeah, wow. and yeah, how did you feel about that? Great. To me, it it, it was like yeah, I mean. Um, as I told you, I grew up with Halloween and now uh, getting the chance having uh, playing those legendary songs with the original singer, for example, the original voice, so to say, um, uh, with Kai. I mean, I've known Khan for such a long time, even with God, uh, um, he supported us with Gamma Ray a couple of times yeah. with Halloween. So that wasn't something really exciting to me on a certain way because I'm I was already used to being that way. Yeah. So but I was really looking for forward to to enter the stage or play with with Michi because I haven't met I hadn't met Michi even before the before the talkings or the meeting um about the conditions whatever of the tour. That was the, the first time I met him. So and right away it was for me oh, hey what a nice guy really respectful uh, human being and that's uh, kind of human beings are really like being surrounded by and when it was about the first rehearsal with him as a vocalist uh the one of the first songs we we played was uh i'm alive and he he always sits uh opposite me so to say so five meters opposite me and so i could and I, I, I remember that scene imagine i was playing i was i just was watching him sitting there with the headphones on screaming like ah! <laughs> and, oh man that was a quite exciting moment in my halloween career to be honest huh? and that's fantastic and of course the fans worldwide are so happy that it has taken shape the way it has yeah. resulting in the new album uh 
one of the highlights of the whole tour on a nightly basis was your drum solo and how it meshed with footage of the late Ingo Schwichtenberg, of course. Um, what would, was it your idea to kind of do the solo that way and kind of include his influence into the program that way? Can you talk about how that all came about? Um, I remember we had a band meeting about about the tour and conditions and stage set and whatever. So we were tossing around the ideas and how, how it could end up on stage. So, And our uh, tour manager, Costa Safiri, which is the former drummer of Pink Cream, band member of, of Andy, for example. So he mentioned just the idea, what about bringing um, Ingo kind of on stage or whatever, bringing the goal, the, the spirit of Ingo on, on stage. Yeah, that's all. Uh, and I was like, hmm, that would be a cool idea, but how could I do it? Right. And so all of a sudden, yeah, I've got this idea because <clears throat> the previous tour, that was the first tour where we had this kind of a screen behind me, where we had all this uh, 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 videos going and whatever. So, and I thought, oh, um, I, I, I've got an idea. So uh, what about bringing video, a living Ingo on stage and doing a kind of a drum battle as Chester Thompson and Phil Collins did in the past you remember genesis yes yes Chester thompson phil collins they always do a kind of a drum battle and i thought ah that would be kind of a cool thing doing a drum battle with ingo ingo sits in the screen and i'm in real so and um, together with um costa safiro we yeah, we contacted tons of people fan clubs so about who has video tapes of the of ingo or whatever photos and videos whatever every kind of material we would be blessed getting and so we got it i i got the the tapes um i got um was from from his brother Oh. And uh, yeah, he contacted me and said, hey, listen, I'm Ingo's brother. <clears throat> and so I do have a couple of videotapes, this cassette, you know, this VHS cassette. Yeah. And I said, uh, could you convert it uh, into DVD formats or whatever? And he did it. So and then I started to sifting through the material, the, uh, the video material. And while sifting through, I already saw the tone wasn't at a good quality. So I just watched him moving. So and through his movements, I got an imagine how the groove could have been. So I set up in my, in my, in my drum studio, I set up two screens, you know, with video. And so I, I kind of, um, tried to follow his movements and I recorded it while following his movements. So I was like, ah, okay, now he is doing this, ah, bing, bing, bong, bong, boof, boof, bing, bing, bang, 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 bang. And then afterwards I listened to the recordings and I already could hear grooves and fill-ins and stuffs. And from this bits and pieces, I put a drum solo together and I cut the video stuff onto the entire recordings of, of my drum demos and so it ended up in having this wonderful um, emotional uh, drum solo night after night but it took me a half a year to get it done really to to cut all the pieces to uh to zoom in to zoom out because uh the material i've got was really scarcely just a couple of minutes how to make out of a couple of minutes a long drum solo uh, it took me. It took me a while, and uh, I refined and uh, I re-recorded, and uh, it took me a long time. Uh, mainly, uh, uh, I would say, all in all, pff, half a year. Wow. Well, your efforts were did not go unnoticed because when I saw it in in Hollywood, and I'm sure at so many other shows throughout the tour, it was just so seamless and smooth, and it looked fantastic. And you, your play is fantastic, of course, throughout 
So thank you for sharing that, Danny. And this brings us to the new album. So Halloween, self-titled album dropped on Friday. I know you guys dropped Skyfall, another epic 12-minute song for Halloween is the first single, great video. Uh, my favorite song so far is the catchy Best Time. Um, I love Ro Robot King and Indestructible are great too, but I could already picture, even though I'm not in South America or Europe, I could already picture those fans jumping during the chorus of a uh, of best Maybe. time. I, I would do that in America. If you hopefully come to San Antonio, we'll get into that momentarily. But for you, Danny, on the album as a whole, what was the biggest challenges for your drum parts? To find the right feeling to it. For, sorry, excuse me, for every song, because every song is so diverse, so different to the other one. And so um, this time we spent a lot of time to find the right feeling the right approach and the right attitude towards uh, for, for, for every song you know what i mean for example indestructible was the first song i started the drum recordings with so for example this song i recorded in four versions uh, the four, first version was uh, i recorded really easy played i i record i played really easily so not that hard as i'm used to without a click yeah. Uh, and then I, I played the same the same way, but with a click to have it more stiff. <laughs> then I played hard without a click and then I played soft without a click. And those four um, <clears throat> versions gave us an impression how it could sound and how it could feel. So and that kind of uh, uh, approach we did with every every song. I played a couple of minutes to get an impression which way should we go, which way uh, suits the song best. And yeah, to to answer your question, it was like that was the <clears throat> that was the toughest part of the recordings uh, to mm -hmm. find the right feel because this time in that way, together with our longtime producer Charlie Bauerfein, I I always I'm kind of uh, fuzzy and really meticulous and Together with Charlie, we are quite pedantic that, sure. in the point of finding the right drum arrangement and the right feel. Often, I, we have the, the perfect drum take in a, in, in, a, in a point of technique or patterns. Yeah, pattern-wise, it's perfect, but it doesn't touch me, you know, or Charlie. So it tells nothing. You know what I mean? So right. Charlie always wants me to play, to tell him something with my drums rather than posting around with uh, big drum fills and, and what I always do, of course, overplay the entire record. <laughs> so <clears throat> the main focus was on feeling. I had to, I wanted to convey my feelings, to transmit my, my impressions, my imaginations, all, everything I felt back then when recording. So that's the most important point of, uh, of being a musician convey your emotions uh, and that what probably if you if you are able doing this or if you are able to do that in general so that probably <clears throat> makes the difference to to other recordings which are just recorded because in a uh, yeah just get it done and keep going you know but we had a plenty of time because of the pandemic. That's the only positive thing I have to name, to mention the pandemic. All of a sudden, we had plenty of time <laughs> because the tour was canceled or, or respectively postponed. And so we had plenty of time. OK, hey, uh, refine things, re-record things, add more things. And on top, we got two completely different sounding mixes done by Roland Brent, you know, two completely different mixes. So what you hear is the more vintage sounding, sounding uh, mix, and we have a more heavy metal, uh, uh, more into your face uh, mix sure. on the other hand. But it doesn't really felt the right way um, to go that way. You know, we wanted to have it more warm, more humanic, more as the old rec records were made. So in the 80s, yeah. that's yeah. another point I have to mention. We brought back a rolling tape machine. The drums were recorded on a tape machine. Yeah. Uh, that you can hear. That's the difference because due to that rolling tape machine, a lot of frequencies 
will appear, will vanish because the tape can't keep it uh, all those kind of frequencies yeah. and so it brings more in the kind of warm warmth and more it's more round it's more humanic yeah and, and it reminds you right away to the recordings from the 80s where every record was made that way and so yeah. that's what we wanted to get back so we we thought it would be cool to bring back the rolling tape machine and connect it with the no today's technology such as pro tools and whatever so you you easily couldn't say okay hey we we wanted to have the best of both worlds the best of the vintage world and the best of the modern world so and that's what we connected with that album awesome danny tell me about the video for skyfall it's one of the most elaborate halloween has ever done another epic 12 minute song uh, the filming for it and the, the thought concept of course told from an alien's point of view who fell out of the sky from his spaceship very unique type of song for halloween another epic long song tell me about the video <laughs> i mean to tell about the video shoot it's always oh, um it's even harder work um to do a video shoot than go on tour to me wow. you know because you would sit around all day long nothing happens then you have to all of a sudden you have to play a couple of frequences and then stop hang on close-ups uh band all uh, no close-ups now you have to wait until seven close-ups done and go back home go back to the hotel we, we, we will call you and it everything will it's a kind of bits and pieces that's the way a video shoot goes, you know, I mean, yeah, it takes, it, it, took, it took probably two days, two days just for the filming. We were squeezed a bit and one more day I've heard to do all that additional filming stuff where the band wasn't, um, no one had to be around of the band. So, right. and yeah, that's all. Uh, it took us a long time and uh, preparations for it. I mean, Martin Häusler did a hell of a job and he's well organized. And that was is another topic. I mean, the problem was um, this pandemic thing. There were strict regulations uh, to combine all these regulations and this long, 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 long schedule of, of filming and stuff. Well, that was a quite strenuous thing um, back then. And I'm happy that it turned out to be one of the best uh, videos we've ever done. It did. And that begs the question, Danny, do you believe in aliens? Hey, after the after my experience I've made with this pandemic, never say no. Yeah. You <laughs> never know. Hey, who knows? Right? Who knows? Uh, for me, personally, I hope not. <laughs> but why not? You never know. So that what may it's you. I can't say yes, but I can't say no. So again, who knows? <laughs> yeah, provided even a bigger mystery, I guess, after filming yeah. the video. So I got to tell you, so with the pandemic, I know here in San Antonio, uh, local promoters going back before the pandemic were working on bringing Halloween to San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And I know at that time, two years ago, they told me they were shooting for June of 2021 which would be now. Obviously yeah. that's not going to happen. Do you and of course I mentioned the Hollywood show that I flew to to cover. That was when you guys only played seven or eight American dates in the states. Yeah. Do you know right now as you're planning for dates? I know you have Europe. Do you have anything planned for North America and the states and Texas in the Yeah, world? of course. I mean, um actually we want to tour around the world as we are used to, yeah, and hopefully it brings us everywhere we can play. Times are kind of uh, kind of unpredictable. Become a kind of unpredictable. So uh, we postponed this kind of uh, this tour for the third time um, to the beginning of the next year, and uh, together with Hammerfall, which I think it's going to be amazing for for the metal fan. I mean, uh, we've known another Hammerfall and Halloween. We've known another for such a long time, and are really looking forward catching up with the boys again and having a good time on tour. But to answer your question, of course, we want to play uh, the US 
you know, and South America, Japan, Europe, uh, as always, we'd like to tour around the world as it was initially planned. Hopefully we can, we can make it. You never know. Yeah. Time's a kind of uh, you know, unpredictable. Who knows what what comes up next? Huh? Sure, sure. But we okay. want to do it because we need it to do it to 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 crave our slakes to go on stage. <laughs> sure, absolutely. Uh, Danny, I have a question from one of my social media readers nearby San Antonio here in a town called Live Oak. Jeff uh, from Live Oak wants to know what type of bass drum pedals you use and what are your settings. I play the Pearl Redline pedals, uh, double chained, also red lines, that's called red lines. And my settings are, I have, I have a really loose string, a uh, spring, the spring tension is really loose. The beater is really long, so I have more weight. And I, sh I play the kind of a short board adjustment. He knows right away what I'm talking about. I have a short board adjustment, a long beater, distance and a loose spring tension nice nice and danny did i read some i believe i read somewhere did you used to uh be a tour, the touring drummer for blaze bailey yeah uh was right. it like playing with blaze i was fun it was fun because the band back then the backing band so to say contains a couple of members from the uh, uh doro pesh uh doro band oh, yes and uh and me so we, we toured yeah we toured across uh, europe but just maybe 20 dates or whatever so it wasn't a, a short stint in his band because all of the sudden i got a call from a, a stupid german band called halloween can you mention this <laughs> so i had to break up uh, uh so i had to quit uh place and he was uh, really really kind and said he completely understand this and it got something similar going years yeah. before uh, so he just said hey whatever money you can save go and buy a house that was his last words to me <laughs> wow. yeah but it was it was um exciting of course for me as an unknown musician back then uh, to get a call from the former iron maiden singer uh, with this kind of backing band the doro band uh, uh, it was an honor playing uh, legendary uh, Iron Maiden songs. He took place with uh, and his own records. I mean, yeah. you will find you find really strong material on it. Yeah, so Ghost in the Machine or this this um, album, which was on the market back then when I was part of the band, Believe or something like this. It's it's a long time ago. Yeah, but even this record. Idea. But even this record had strong or has strong songs. So, uh, um, yeah, we had heaps of songs to play night after night. Main, mainly we were touring alone on our own. So no support band. I remember one show we played four fucking hours. <laughs> four fucking hours. The Black Lagoon. <laughs> I remember he came here uh, in the winter time when winter hardly exists here in Texas and in San Antonio I think it was 2015 or 2014 he played at a sports bar his whole backing band was Texans uh, John Moyer from Disturb on bass Bobby Jarzombic on drums and there were probably 60 people there and it was in a pool hall and not even a real stage he just stood on the floor the dance floor and played for two and a half hours and it was that's, outstanding. that's really weird um that's what he what he does in general today Huh? He yeah. tours around Europe, but he has no own backing band. He rentals mm -hmm. um, the band in the town he will take place in. And so that's weird. So yeah. the band the band gets the material. Uh, so during the sound check, they're going to rehearse the most important points and then go and play the show. Um, next day, another city, another band. Yeah, really crazy, huh? but somehow he enjoys it and he can make a living with it and he likes what he does or he likes what he's doing um, as much as the fans. But you're right, the capacity is mainly about the club version, but just 20, 30, 50, up to maybe 100 fans as spectators will be around. So uh, 
that's uh, awesome. oh, I'm so sorry for him that way. But uh, it, it, it seems that he is a happy man. Yeah. Danny, we'll wrap it up. Uh, can you tell me your favorite Iron Maiden song to play live, and of course your favorite Halloween song to play live? Uh, from 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 this from this area, the uh, I mean, we just played. Um, but when you play with Blaze for me, yeah, yeah, we just played uh, the songs he sang on. That was right. uh, oh man from the from the X Factor and uh, yeah, 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 um, man. Uh, I can't remember that song. It got better. Oh, yeah, excuse, excuse me. The Klansman or uh, Man on the Edge? Man on the Edge. There we go. That was the song we played, uh, among others. So, but that was a uh, that was a great. That's a great tune, anyway. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, and the the Klansman. It's a it's, it's a. They still play it live, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 It's it's a nice song too, and um, my most favorite song to play in Halloween is. No doubt about it. Eagle fucking fly free. Oh, nice. <laughs> that was the first song we played together in the rehearsal room. I remember that that uh, that moment quite well. So, uh, what kind of song shall we play? Oh, Danny, what do you want to play? Uh, Eagle fly free. That's my kind of drumming. Really? Yeah, let's go. And so we played it, and so uh, with Waiki sitting in front of me, <laughs> my little cranky old dude. <laughs> I actually filmed that song at the Hollywood Hollywood show. Of course, there was no professional video allowed. We had to check in our cameras after the second song, Doctor Steen. So that forced me to miss "I'm Alive," the third song, which was always one of my favorites. I was upset that I had to miss that song. But at the end of the show, you guys played "Eagle Fly Free." I filmed it with my phone, and at the Hollywood show. Of course, unbeknownst to you, on the very side of the Palladium, a fight broke out during the mosh pit of that song. <laughs> okay. I, I remember that show quite well, quite well. Yeah. Because I met, all of a sudden, I met a, I met a longtime friend of mine here from Switzerland. He lives in LA. And he was, he, he, he was one of the spectators, so to say. He got a ticket. I didn't know. And so I bumped, but I bumped into him um, when we were um at lemmy's bar what's the name of it uh, uh, uh rainbow? Mr. Yeah, rainbow rainbow a rainbow so yeah somehow i was there uh a boy bumped bumped my shoulder and i was like hey and he was like danny and i was like oh <laughs> coincidentally <laughs> huh i mean i really enjoyed that night Awesome. Well, Danny, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to go into the pit with me here for Alamo True Metal. I sincerely wish you the best of luck and the band uh, with the new album and hopefully oh. the tour gets going. And um, and hopefully you do come here to San Antonio, Texas, and I can meet you in person. Thank you and shake your hand at that time or give you a fist bump uh, pre-pandemic or post-pandemic for the uh, interview today. I was going to ask you, are you calling from Switzerland or are you in Germany? I'm on the Swiss. I'm on the German side, so Switzerland is maybe uh, ten kilometers from here. So, so I'm a Swiss-born, Swiss-born. Right born. Yeah, yes, I knew that. And and this uh, close to Zurich, it takes me uh, fifty kilometers to Zurich. So that close, I live here to the to Switzerland. It's you never know on which country you have your feet on. Your feet on. Yeah, it's a uh, kind of the borders are not really existing. So when you walk around, so long around, uh, strolling around, you never, you never know. Is it Switzerland or is it Germany? Whatever. So it's kind of uh, a floating thing. So sure. Well, Danny, I, again, I can't thank you so much. You're a fantastic drummer. It's wonderful to oh. hear you on the new record. Wonderful to watch you live. And I sincerely hope you can come down to San Antonio with the band and we can do watch it. And wish you the best of luck with everything. Thank you so hey. much. For Thank you very much. I really enjoyed this uh, interview and wish you all the best. Uh, and hopefully we can catch up with another, with each other on tour whenever it will be. Uh, I certainly hope so. Thank you so much, Danny. All the best to you. Take care. Have a good night. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye.